What's up everyone, Bender here with a 6 episode in our Flash game programming tutorial. And in this one I've gotten quite a bit few requests on it, so we're going to go ahead and tackle this one. Is how to use uh, the player's name in the game, how to access it, and how to make a small little NPC that displays a message uh, with the player's name in there. So if we go ahead and go over to our first frame, we have our name thing over here. If we click on the save name button, we'll get on release save name input name. Now, if you don't remember, save name was a function we create we created in the top frame, which simply saves whatever we pass in as our player name. And since it's a global variable, variable, excuse me, that means we can use it in just about every in any scene in the movie. So, if it's created on a timeline, it can be used, basically view the movie, each scene is like a movie clip. And, as long as you create it outside of any other item, you can use it anywhere on the timeline. Now, if you create a new scene, that's it's basically like a new movie clip, you have to declare new variables. Unless, uh, the, uh, global pl unless you create a global variable, excuse me. And there's several different other ones, just as a brief overview, we have global, we have root, which gets the one level higher, but since this movie is the highest it can go, there's no technical underscore root uh, scope. By the way, these, these are called scopes, global, root, although those are uh, scopes. There's other uh, underscore parent, which is basically the same as underscore root except with underscore parent it only accesses one level above in movie clip while underscore root li literally gets what's in this top frames oops and so now that we have that out of the way uh we need to access this in order to use it so what we're going to go and do is we're going to create a new thing in our player town so Let's go ahead and unlock that. Go to our background and we'll go ahead and, I know this isn't exactly the best of ideas, but let's just go ahead and add him in here. We'll create a new frame. We'll just call it NPC. And we'll make our, this guy a block. Cause we've, cause I feel like making him a blockhead. <laughs> and now if you don't mind that uh, very bad pun, let's go ahead and get him made. Let's just put him here. And let's just give some kind of indication that he's a person we can talk to. We'll give him some eyes. Whoa. Let's get rid of the stroke. There we go. And let's convert him to a movie clip. We shall call it NPC1. You can name it whatever you want. And the instance is what you really need to note, take note of. Again, I'll just name it NPC1. So go ahead and save. Well, I tend to save it just to be safe every now and then. It's a little proper etiquette. So now if we go over to here, our main movie clip, we already have a, a hit test for the sceneries. And again, as you see, it says underscore root. Um, that's just making sure we're accessing the topmost movie clip instead of in here. Because if we just put scenery.wall, it would look within this movie clip for something with the instance of scenery. So just to be safe, I put underscore root so that we're referring to the upmost timeline. So now we're going to go ahead and put another if statement. We're going to say if this dot hit test underscore root dot scenery dot npc one. We're going to go ahead and just trace it, make sure our code is working. That's all. We it's a good habit to get into to make sure code is working before you get too far and find out something didn't go right. The best thing to do is trace and we'll just say it works. So we'll go ahead and save. 
We're not going to enter our name yet because we haven't done anything. And if we go ahead and move over to our NPC, we touch it, it starts printing out works. Okay, so now that we know our hit test code works, we can go ahead and start creating you know, a little message to appear. So what we can do is uh, let's go ahead and go to a rectangle tool. Let's give it a rounding of about uh, seven. Go up here, create a bar just about uh, slightly smaller than the width of the movie. And change the inner to whatever color you want. I'm going to do like a kind of a dark gray. And I didn't give it a border yet, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a... Mm, let's just give it a darker gray. All right, we're going to double click that. Hit F8, make it a movie clip. And we're just going to call this one... Mm, top bar. And go ahead and just put that right at the top of the movie. And so next what we're going to do is in here, we're going to create uh, two tech, two dynamic tech text boxes. Uh, make sure if with the fonts, make sure they're embedded, because if they're not embedded, it oh, whoops. Well now bold is in there, so actually that's good. We'll leave it at bold. We'll create a bold text box, and we'll make it left alignment. And we'll give this a variable of npc underscore, oh not plus, underscore name. We're going to create one more text box, except this time give it a regular font. And we're just going to put a message in here. Well, this is this will be where our message will be handled, moreover. And we'll just name this one message underscore box. So we have message box and npc underscore name. We're going to go ahead and go back. First of all, let's go ahead and go to our scenery. Uh, we'll just set an on clip event for this movie clip. This is a little too much work, but it basically gives a little bit more customization to each NPC. I'm going to go ahead and type this dot my name equals, we'll just call this one Bob. Now what this does is this will set the variable my name within the scope of MPC1 to Bob. So anytime we want to access this name we can just say scenery.mpc1.myName and it will come up with Bob. So we're going to go back to scene one and also we can do this for also the message We'll say this dot my message equals uh, let's do some random uh, hi my name is Bob and I a useless NPC all right so now we're gonna go ahead and go to scene one and so once we get the underscore root dot mpc1, we're going to create two new variables, var uh, current name equals, uh, what was it, underscore root dot scenery dot mpc1 dot my name. And then var current message equals underscore root, oops, underscore root dot scenery dot mpc1 dot my message. And to be safe, we're going to again trace those two, make sure they work. Current name. current message test our movie continue 
and we're getting Bob, and we're gonna get and we're getting the message. Hi, my name is Bob, and I'm a useless NPC. All right, so we know we're getting the values correctly. So now what we can do is we can apply those. Oh, we also need to incorporate our player name actually. So let's go ahead and go back to into here. And we'll go ahead and say, how are you, put a space, and then outside the parentheses, <coughs> excuse me, flim up my throat. <coughs> then we're going to put a plus after the quotations, and then we're going to put underscore global dot player name. And that is how you access a global variable. You can't just type out player name. <coughs> Otherwise, they'll think you're talking about this movie clip's value of player name, which we do not have set. So that's how we get our name. And then we put another plus, and then we put more quotes, put a space, and then actually no space, just put a question mark. All right, so now we can go back to our main movie clip. Then we can say, what do we name this? Top bar. We can say top bar dot and what did we name our two we named them NPC name and message box so top bar dot NPC underscore name equals current name and top bar dot message underscore box equals current message now what this will do is this is going to set our variable top bar or top bar dot npc name in here to the variable current name that we set right here which is equal to what we have set the variable names for this npc here and the same goes for message box sets it to the variable current message that we created right here and it sets it to uh, scenery npc1 and the variable my message and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're also, before we test it, we're just going to put an else statement. Basically saying if he's not touching this specific movie clip, this code may change in the future. But as of right now, we're just going to put top bar dot npc underscore name equals, whoops, equals nothing. And then same for the message box. This is just so nothing appears if he's not touching the NPC. So we test our movie, go ahead, click continue, we go over to him. And it is not working. Hold on one moment. Top bar, message underscore box, NPC underscore name. Oh, I know what we did wrong. We have to set it to underscore root. Otherwise, it's thinking about what we're talking about in this movie clip. Now it should work. There it is. Bob, and then it says, Hi, my name is Bob. I am useless. Lizzie. How are you? Oh, whoops. <laughs> we forgot to set our name. I'll go ahead and choose a name. I'll just type in Bender. Click Save Name. Continue. Now, if we talk to him, there we go. It says Bob. It says, Hi, my name's Bob, and I'm a useless NPC. How are you, Bender? So, basically, what we covered in, and, and yes, once we stop touching him, the message disappears. All right. So, in this tutorial, we covered basically global variables, how to access our global variables. How to access variables within certain scopes, being underscore root, being within uh, another movie clip, and how to actually set a variable to, to a specific movie clip by simply putting this. So this has been Bender. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Later.